Today we're going to talk about assembling a matrix and a retainer if we're going to do um, an amalgam or a composite restoration. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the Toffelmeyer retainer and circumferential stainless steel band as opposed to a preloaded universal matrix band and retainer. This one's easy, very easy. All the work is done for you. Okay, so first of all, um, we're going to take a look at this. And this retainer, 99% of the time, you're going to find that the retainer is, needs to be on the buckle of the tooth. Sometimes we put it on the lingual, and that's if we're missing a lot of buccal tooth structure. But most of the time we have it out on the buckle. The retainer has three slots in it, or grooves. There's one here, one, and then we have one here, two, and then we have this big groove here. I call it the side door. Okay? And then we've got two nuts, the small nut and the larger nut, and we've got this uh, piston here. This, okay, and this piston actually keeps the matrix band stable within the retainer. So let's get that done first. So we're going to go through three slots. And let's see, there's one slot, two, and then out the side door, three slots. Okay, and then we're going to tighten it, the short nut first. Tighten it. Short people get in line first in elementary school. Okay, now we're going to put the um, band over the tooth. And it slips right in, that's good. Okay, now ideally you want the edge of the band, the occlusal most portion of the band, to be about one or two millimeters occlusal to the height of the proposed marginal ridge that you're going to create. Then we're going to tighten the larger nut. Okay, there we go. And the next thing we're going to do is place the wooden wedge. Okay, and I'm going to put this one in from the lingual. You can pick it up with your um, cotton pliers or a hemostat. Okay, stick that in as far as it'll go. Tell your patient that you're going to feel some pressure. Okay, but it shouldn't hurt, just a lot of pressure. Okay. And then we're going to burnish the band against the adjacent tooth. We can use this small ball burnisher. Sometimes I'll even use a small acorn burnisher or even the small uh, amalgam condenser. And the purpose of the wedge, the wooden wedge, is to actually create a little orthodontic movement. So we're actually increasing the distance from tooth number 29 to the mesial of to the distal of tooth number 28. And that helps us get nice positive contact. Okay, and that's it. Very simple. So now we're ready to take it off. We've condensed. So we're going to loosen our screws, our nuts, and remove our um, Toffelmeyer and sort of, let's see, first thing you want to do is get your uh, wedge out. And I don't have cotton pliers. I'm going to use these scissors. You're not going to do this with your patient though. Okay. Pretend these are cotton pliers. Remove that. Okay. And then turn your band sort of diagonally and then out. Okay. Now, this is the universal band and this is quick and easy. No one will ever want to use my Toffelmeyer. Just slip it in. And of course, you're going to have to wedge it. I'm hiding. I have to sort of stabilize everything. Okay. Matrix band. Tighten, and you're ready to condense. That's good. All right, now we can use these for either amalgam or composite. 
but I'll be very honest with you, you can get the best, tightest contact with your Garrison Segmental Matrix System. Okay. Oh, and can I just let them know this one thing, Jose? Uh, this is the molar bands, especially if you're doing an MOD. Sometimes you've got a deep subgingival, geng deep subgingival, gingival box, and um, you want this matrix band to go below the gingival margin. So you need this extra width right here. Okay, and that helps an awful lot. If you say you've got a very deep MO on a bicuspid or a molar, you might want to cut off the distal part because that might keep the band from sinking as low as you want on the mesial. So you just cut off the opposite hump. Looks like a little camel hump. Okay. All right. Let's get back to our um, Toffelmeyer. I'm sorry. Let's get back to our segmental matrix. And here we go. Now, we're going to do number 29 again. And the first thing we're going to do is take our fingers and get some contour to our band. Just with our little our fingertips, OK? And the concave, can, oh, I'm sorry dropped it into the patient's mouth. The concave edge of the band goes against the occlusal surface. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, and you can use your cotton pliers to seat this. We're going to drop the band in here. Okay, and we're going to hold it and you want to use the band, a band that will just about match the height of the proposed marginal ridge that you want to create. Excuse me. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab, and this one's too small. Let's try the, I think that's the largest one we have. The embrasure spaces on these deniforms is humongous. So let's use another deniform. Let's try this one. Okay. There we go. That slides in there. And let's try this. Okay. And that snaps off. There we go. Now the wedge, the plastic wedge for the composite for these segmental matrices this plastic wedge, and this works so much better in the patient. It really yeah. does. This is going to give you a false impression. You know, I've been building up, I've been recommending the use of these things, but it doesn't work so well on this deniform. So I'm going to have to really hold this. The embrasure spaces are just huge on this thing. All right, this is our forcep. And let's, this one's been set up for an MOD. I have two, two retainers two rings stacked on top of each other. So let's take this off. Alrighty, and we're going to use it on this one. And can you see these little uh, indentations here? Okay, these are going to fit on top of our wedge. Tell you what, let's use one of these. Let's see if this will help. Make it too high. Take this out. Easier for me to hold on to, maybe. No. Probably not. Yes. Wrong wedge. Though you can use a wooden one. Let's put this plastic wedge in there. Okay, and here we go. Ta-da! Mm -hmm. Now, this ring is very, very, very good at creating separation. 
so that you have a more positive contact. And that is extremely important because you cannot condense composite the way you would amalgam. It's, it just doesn't have the stiffness to it. So this really is extremely beneficial. But you're also going to burnish it a little bit. Don't burnish too much because you'll get too much contact. Okay. Very simple. All right, let's remove this. And I have one more thing to tell you. This uh, segmental matrix has a little um, projection at the end. And this is meant for preparations that have very deep subgingival boxes. You have more length here. Well, it's the width of the band, but you've got more length to work with on the tooth. So make sure that the band goes subgingival there. Okay, that's it. It's all very simple. Thank you. When I assemble the Toffelmeyer and the circumferential stainless steel matrix band, I always sit in the 9 o'clock position so that I can orient myself well. And I'll even do that if I'm assembling it for the upper arch. The reason being, it's um, the setup in the lower right-hand side is going to work for the upper left hand side, the upper left quadrant. Okay, you got that? Because it's a little awkward to sort of visualize all of this if you're sitting in the 11 o'clock position, you're going to be working in the upper arch or 12 o'clock position, and you're, you, you know, you're trying to assemble this and you're thinking upside down and backwards, but you don't have to. Put yourself in the 9 o'clock position, 10 o'clock position, and observe directly vision coming this way, Let's pretend I'm setting up for the upper left-hand quadrant. So this is going to fit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. So if I had an upper arch, you know, here, I just use it like so. Okay. You see, the open end of the U is going; it will be going down against the gingiva. All right. So if I wanted to assemble this for the lower uh, left quadrant, what would I have to change? The band needs to come out this way, doesn't it? Okay, so this assemblage here for the lower left quadrant, all we have to do to make it work the other for the upper would be to turn it this way. Okay, but of course, again, now I'm really going to confuse you, how not? All right, I'll be fair. So I want this set up for bicuspid in the upper right-hand side. So I assemble it just thinking about the lower left-hand side. So when I go to put it in the upper tooth, all I have to do, turn it this way, and I'm ready to go. Okay, that's it.